I'd like to make my enemies a little bit smarter so that they don't fall from the platforms. You can see here that I already have this finished where the enemy doesn't doesn't fall out of this piece of ground, floating ground. So, basically what I want to be checking as many times as possible is whether I'm about to fall. If I'm about to fall, I want to switch direction, move to the other side. Now, how can I check something all the time, basically, on every game tick, as, as you can say? Well, there's a method that sprites have, which is called step. And step is executed as many times as possible. The, the, the parameter that you get here is the time that has um, occurred since the last time this method was called. So on every step, I want to be checking for what the next tile has. So for instance, this guy is moving that way, and I wanted to check if there's a, if there's nothing here, then it has to change to move to the other side. Also, I want to make sure that I am standing on the ground, because if I'm not, if, if for instance, an enemy is falling, I don't want it to be falling and checking whether there is something on each side, because otherwise it'll fall and it'll just keep on changing directions like crazy. So you want to check firstly that you are on top of firm ground. Secondly, if the next um, tile that's on your way is not a tile, it's empty, so basically there's a cliff, switch sides. So that's in a, in, a, in a macro view what I want to do now. So the first thing I want to get is the direction that I'm currently taking. So let, let's create a variable called this dir x. I can grab the current velocity of the player by accessing p gives me all of the parameters of the player. So everything that was defined here and some other variables as well are available on p. By doing this, I get the I get the direction which will be 1 or minus 1 because the absolute value of the velocity is always going to be positive whereas this is going to be either negative or positive so this division is going to give me 1 or minus 1. 1 if we're going this way and minus 1 if we're going that way. Now, ground. Let's check for ground. I want to access the current stage and I want to locate whatever is in my current X location and beneath me. So for that, um, beneath me, we're starting from the middle of the sprite, so that should be half of the sprite down. That will be, I mean, it's current position plus half of the sprite down. This will be the height of the sprite plus one. That's ba that basically puts me away of the of the enemy sprite, and now I'm on the ground. And that area needs to be of type sprite default. This has to do with collision detection. Remember that we said type that the type was zero for background. Well, the type is sprite default. Um, this is the type for non um, for the collision layer. So this will allow me to check whether we are on the ground or not. Now, what I want to know about the next element that's on this same direction that I'm going to. So if I'm going this way, I want to be checking the very, very next element. This is also, um, we're also going to use this locate method. And I'm just going to copy and paste the entire um, operation and explain it. So in order to find <clears throat> our next element, what we need to do is locate on X, the um, the tile that's right after where our character is. So, dir x can be either one or minus one, and this basically works the same way as what we did previously with y. Um, let me show you the actual game. So, it's looking it's looking forward, right one pixel after the actual um, enemy, and then on on y it's actually just looking down. So we're basically looking one before and down and we're searching for sprite default. Now the next um, let's let's also create another variable that will that we'll be using next tile. So let's check if the next element if is is um 
is an actual tile because it could be that it's that it's the player. For instance, um, you could have a situation where the player is right beneath the enemy, and then the enemy will go on top of the player. But we don't want that. It only needs to be needs to check for ground for actual tiles. So this allows us to check for tiles, and because the elements are the, the elements are represented internally as a tile layer. So if that's the case, then there is a next tile. Next tile is true. So um, this is now where we'll do our direction direction change. So we check if there's a next tile. I mean, if there's not a next uh, an, uh, a next tile, basically, if we're on a cliff and we're on top of the ground, then um, we do the corresponding switching of dire switches of direction which I'm just gonna copy and paste and explain afterwards. So if we were going to the right, we'll, um, we'll flip directions. If we're going left, we, we stay because the, the default direction is, um, is left. And, that, and, the, and the other way around. And basically this, the velocity changes to the opposite. So it bounces um, back. So that will give us this effect, which is what we want, so that it doesn't fall out of the cliff. This may be uh, a, little, a little confusing at first, but if you go through it step by step, really understanding what's going on, um, you'll you'll understand it. Also, the way it works with walls, so see that it's actually bouncing from a wall as well. Um, that's in Quintus underscore 2D, if I'm not wrong, it's called a bounce. And you can you can find the code in here, and it's it follows a bit of a similar logic to what I've just done. So I recommend that you take a look at this component as well.